everyone, my name is Hala and I'm from Iraq. Before I go on, I would just like to commend the Kurdish girl who spoke before me who could not finish her speech. These are the voices that we need to commend and encourage. These are the voices that come from torn homelands that are facing this crisis every day. It is very, very difficult for refugees to come out and actually speak about these issues. These issues are raw, they are deep, and they are difficult to speak about. So can we please have a round of applause for the girl who spoke inside the Kurdish and I am from Iraq. My family moved here in September 1995. Next month will be 20 years since we moved to New Zealand. Our move was meant to be a temporary thing. I come from a land in which from the beginning of its inception, post Ottoman Empire has never seen peace. It has seen bloodshed after bloodshed after massacre after bloodshed after massacre until today in which we have ISIS continuing these massacres following on from the US invasion and occupation. We moved to New Zealand following the Gulf War because my parents felt that, New Ze felt that Iraq was not stable. We thought we'd come here for a few years, they wanted a better life and we were very lucky to be accepted under the skilled migrant category in 1995 which has become more and more difficult every single year. It's become more and more difficult for people to come to New Zealand and start a life from scratch, from new. In 2003, my parents watched what they called home burn, burn to flames. My parents don't have a home anymore. Home is now New Zealand. When I first moved to New Zealand, I couldn't speak any English, I could only speak Arabic. And my parents had to make the tough choice of putting me into English, or obviously putting me into an English primary school, and I learned English before I actually went back and spoke Arabic. These are the sorts of difficulties that immigrants as well as refugees continue to face, and refugees face them at more of an extreme um, uh, level. New country, new environment, completely different environment from what we were used to. But 20 years on from when I have moved and, and, and 13 years on, sorry I'm clearly not a math student, 13 years on from the US invasion and occupation in 2003, my community is a flourishing one. The Iraqi community is full, the Iraqi refugee and immigrant community is filled of highly educated people, highly skilled people who have jobs, who contribute to civil society, who pay taxes, who continue to, to, to contribute to this flourishing society. And today, yes, I stand here as an immigrant, but I am also a Kiwi, an Arab, a Muslim, a university student, I work at a union, but above all, I am human. Now this, now, now language is very, very powerful. We hear that humans are illegal. Humans are not illegal. Language has been very, very powerful. In Syria, there is a crisis that has been going on since 2011. This crisis didn't just pop out of nowhere. This absolute crisis has been a culmination of the past four years of absolute massacre and the Syrian refugees along with all other refugees should be welcomed into New Zealand with arms wide open. The government has said that we cannot support doubling the quota or even, I don't know, increasing it by a quarter because these will, this will stretch our services, it will stretch, um, it will put a strain on our services. Now, that is correct because our services and the funding into these services is very poor at the moment. So this is not an excuse to say, no, we will not accept more refugees. It is actually something that should compel the government and the government should take action to increase funding into these very, very important services. The governmental organizations and the non-governmental organizations 
organizations which we are all here today supporting, like Auckland Refugee Council, who support asylum seekers that do not fit into the quota. These are the communities and, and organizations that need to be properly funded by this government. The government really needs to get serious and fund these and fund these uh, organizations. We've got an election coming up in 2017, and, and we really, really need to push our government, or whatever government takes over, to really take this issue seriously. For those of us who have been longtime supporters of this cause, this, this wider call for an increase to the refugee quota could not have come any sooner. And I want to stress that it does not end here. This problem will not be solved by protests. This problem and this fight that we are fighting is a very, very long fight. I implore everyone to get involved. You need to write to your MPs. You need to tell them about why you care about this issue. Why you care as a New Zealand citizen, as a New Zealand um, visa holder, why you care about this issue. You need to talk to your friends and your family, and we need to keep up the public pressure. Public opinion is shifting, and it is a crucial time, but we need to continue this political pressure if we are honestly serious about doubling the refugee quota. Kia kaha.